Welcome to the Workforce Connection. My name is Rob Mellion. I'm your host. The Workforce Connection is a production of the Fall River Area Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Bristol Community College, and Fall River Community Television. Every month, we talk about issues and topics that are important to employers, employees, and those who want to be employed. And this month is a really interesting show for you. We're actually going to be talking about the Workforce Training Fund program. It is a program that's been around for some time, but a lot of employers don't really know what the program is and how it can be a benefit to them. And to help explain the Workforce Training Fund program and how it can work with uh, uh, training programs within uh, various businesses all across the region here, we have Rob Vitello, who is the Corporate Services Director at Bristol Community College. And I also, since we have you here too, I'd love to talk to Rob with you about the Workforce Center on Duval Street. Uh, but thank you so much for taking time to be on the show today. My pleasure. So, Rob, I guess the first question I have is, let's, let's talk about you for a second. You know, what do you do as the uh, Director for Corporate Services at Bristol Community College? Oh, thank you, uh, uh, Rob. I actually joined uh, Bristol Community College last September, so it's been a little more, a little over a year. And uh, prior to that, I worked uh, s exclusively on the Workforce Training Fund program uh, for Commonwealth Corporation, uh, assisting companies in the area. So I'm very familiar with it, and that's my role um, under as the director of corporate services. So really out there to uh, connect with the employers in the community talk to them about their training needs, and then design the training programs uh, and deliver that training wherever it's mo most convenient for them. And most of the time, that is on their uh, site, at their company, uh, depending on you know exactly what, we, what, what they need and what we work out. So it sounds like the services that you do, too, blend nicely with the new workforce uh, education institute that is going to be up and running, which we'll be talking about next month on the show. Actually, yes, it absolutely does. We're one component, uh, you know, we're one of the legs of the stool, so to speak, uh, of the new institute. Yeah, we'll probably talk a little bit about that as well. So what is the Workforce Training Fund program, Rob? Well, um, I know you've been a big advocate of the, of, uh, the fund for, for a, a number of years, uh, and the Workforce Training Fund has been around since 1999, actually, and it is a fund that's created by a surcharge on the unemployment insurance that employers all across the state pay into. And that cre creates then uh, around $20 million a year that's then available in grant funding uh, for companies to apply to. So it's one of the largest state-run uh, workforce development programs in the country, uh, and it has been. So we're very fortunate here in Massachusetts to have this resource. So how is it that companies actually use the Workforce Training Fund program? Well, there are uh, a few different uh, programs under the fund. The most um, common one and the one that m most of the companies apply to is the, is the competitive grant program called the General Fund. And they essentially go through an application process, which we assist them with, which is competitive. And then that, uh, if they're successful, that funding largely pays for the cost of delivering the training. Uh, on site or wherever, and they have a matching component to that. So it's certainly they have to have the buy in and, and support, but that's largely the wages of their employees while they are in training. That's a big sacrifice for them to be able to release employees and get trained, even in the short term. So the state recognizes that. So that's pretty much how it works on a broad scale. There are other programs that are designed especially for smaller companies that have uh, less than 100 employees. That's recently been changed and increased. Before it was uh, companies that had less than 50. So they've increased the limit as well as the amount that's available. That works a little differently. And then there's also one if companies are hiring someone who is dislocated, not working. Uh, and that's another program that's available. They can apply very easily to get up to $2,000 to train that person. And that also may be going up, the amount that's available uh, to that. I understand if it hasn't already, it's projected to go up to $5,000 to train a new person because you're getting uh, support for uh, hiring someone who's 
un unemployment. So why should area companies be tapping into and utilizing the Workforce Training Fund program? Well, uh, we take a lot of our support and direction from uh, uh, v Vice President Joan Menard uh, at the college, and she's got the answer to that. She says, you should take advantage of it, of it because it's your money. Uh, you're paying into it. Uh, your competitors are paying into it, too. So, uh, and we want to make sure that it's a statewide program. We want to make sure that uh, it is being fully utilized to the uh, uh, fullest extent down here in southeastern Mass. I think, Rob, that uh, kind of points to a, a real important issue. You said competitors. Uh, competitors don't necessarily have to be the business that is across town. Your competitor could be up in Boston or your competitor could be in the western part of Massachusetts. And my observation, tell me if I'm wrong here, but other communities throughout the Commonwealth, businesses in those communities are tapping into those funds more so than businesses down here in the uh, southeastern and particularly the south coast region. Well, um, uh, yes, I think that in general, certainly in the Boston area and the 128 area, uh, they have always uh, been heavy uh, users of the Workforce Training Fund. Um, and down in our area, it's been a mixed uh, response. So it hasn't been bad, but there's a lot of great things going on right now, but there's always room for more. And even companies that may have had one grant since it's been around for a while, uh, they're certainly eligible to come back and see what their needs are now and apply again. And many of them don't know that. They, they had one go around and and uh, they don't realize they can come back and do something else that's uh, going to upgrade the skill of their workforce. Yeah. yeah, my observations have been that you know many companies fear red tape and they fear you know this is a state program and uh, that's going to put the watchful eye of the state on them and they just want to do business. How has Bristol Community College changed the game for applying and administering workforce training fund grants? Well, we do like to think of ourselves as a one-stop shop. So um, I was brought on because I'm very familiar, particularly with the fund, uh, but we really are looking to make that in an easy process for them. So we'll assist with the application. Um, it has to be driven by the company. The company actually gets the funds. They, they, they come to the company. So uh, they need to be intricately involved and have buy-in from the top CEO all the way down to the supervisors to the shop floor or the, or the, or the, uh, you know, the workers to make sure that there's buy-in. But we will assist with that process and we'll assist with the reporting and the administration of the grant. Um, it's not hard. It does take time. Uh, but we'll make sure that uh, there are no surprises and uh, that uh, uh, if there's any questions, we'll be right there with you to answer them and get the work done. Now, not only does, again, my observation in, in working with Bristol Community College and also area employers is that BCC doesn't just help with the uh, administering of the grants, but you help in the design of the programs themselves. Oh, sure. How does that work? How is it that you are creating programs, training programs that fit the needs of individual employers? Well, we have a, a list of all different trainings that uh, we're eligible, we, we, we are capable of, of uh, producing, but at the bottom we set, have uh, something that says, and we can design any uh, training program that you need. So everything has to be customized. It's, it's, it's the way that the company needs it, but it's also what the Workforce Training Fund prefers. So that if we have a supervisor training, there are particular elements of that that one company might want to, to integrate. Um, and they also may have a less ability to release their supervisors. So we can do anything from a 24-hour course, which is going to be very hard-hitting, and get the results. If they have more time, we could extend that to a 40-hour course, for example. And then in the design, well, when is that going to be delivered? So this is something the company has to work out. Uh, we can do a program that meets every two weeks and extends for a number of months, or we can condense it. So it's very much what will meet the need of the company. Um, and uh, we can offer them recommendations, also share with them what's worked with uh, other uh, companies. We also have companies who are willing to share what's worked with them at their place with others. 
Um, so uh, that's the, the idea is uh, we definitely drill down, find out what is really going to work with that culture in the, in the workplace and their particular dynamics. Uh, you know, with the banks, they can't shut the bank to go to training. They have customers, so we have to devise something that will be, allow us to tr train the tellers, but without, you know, the impact of, uh, of, of, of closing down services. So it's all uh, very exciting. It's, it's what I love to do and, and help figure out what's going to work best for the company. You know, Rob, I'm listening to you, and I'm thinking to myself, this is a community college. Uh, it is remarkable to hear how vested a community college is in workforce development. I mean, it seems like it's really part of uh, the matrix of what it is that BCC, Bristol Community College, is doing. Uh, it's just really impressive to hear. Uh, what are the programs? Uh, I guess if I'm an employer and I'm listening to this show right now, what can be incorporated into one of these workforce training fund programs? What, what types of trainings can you do? Well, it's, it's easier to probably say what's not eligible because it is pretty wide open. Uh, the, the company does have to justify why they have a need for the training. The only types of training that are really not included are ones that are mandated. So there's all types of safety and OSHA type training. Uh, that the company is required to do. So because of that, the state is not going to fund that under a workforce training fund. Um, and there are things uh, that if you've already done training in a certain area, you know, they may not uh, look to fund something like that. Uh, but it is, other than that, it's very wide open. Uh, it is supposed to be more strategic because a big element in these grants uh, or what is going to be the impact on the company. So you don't do training just for the sake of doing training. You want to tie that to real productivity gains or quality improvements and operational improvements as well as employee development. So you have to think about a training that is going to have enough of an impact on the company that you'll be able to say this will actually improve our ability to deliver our product on time because right now our on-time delivery is 80%. We know our competitors are doing it at 90%. We need to improve that. So that's, that's the idea is you really have to uh, yeah, think about it in those terms. We're going to need to go to break right now. Uh, during the break, we're going to hear a public service announcement from Bristol Community College. Before we go to break, how do people get in touch with the center? Well, we have the main number at uh, the community college. It's 508-678-2811, uh, and you put in the extension info, and you'll reach our college, uh, our number down at uh, uh, the center. Perfect. And we'll be right back with more with Rob Vitello about the Workforce Training Fund program here on the Workforce Connection. My name is Maurice Sear and I'm in the Associate's Degree Program for Paralegal Studies. I decided to come to Bristol Community College back in 2008 at the downturn of the economy. Unfortunately, I was one of the people laid off um, in my company. I ended up going to uh, the Workforce Development Office here in Fall River, and they actually connected me with Bristol Community College um, and got me enrolled in the Office Technology Management Program. Civic engagement has just been such a great opportunity for me personally because I've always tried to be involved with my community. My experience with the mobile market has really made me think about my community and about the people in the community. When I first began attending uh, BCC, um, I found myself on the receiving end of the, the food bank. It's just a wonderful experience to know that each month we're helping, the college is helping over a thousand people receive food on a monthly basis. I, I don't think it's anything special what I do. Um, I just do what I do. Welcome back to the Workforce Connection. My name is Rob Mellion. I'm your host, and our guest for this segment is Rob Vitello, and he is the 
Director for Corporate Services at Bristol Community College and particularly at the Center for Workforce Development over on the Wall Street. Rob, I got a great question for you. What are the services? What are the corporate services that are available to area businesses uh, at the Duval Street location? Well, thank you. Um, well, first of all, that's where my office is. So if we're talking about doing the grant writing, we can meet there or I can come to your offices. We also have excellent state-of-the-art classroom facilities there. So a number of our corporate uh, partners will bring employees there. Uh, we can we can house the training there from our state-of-the-art computer labs where we've run a number of computer trainings for companies uh, to some of the soft skills training. Uh, we also have the Green Center that's uh, located um, down in Duval Street and uh, that all can the you, training. Can you talk about the Green Center real quickly? Certainly. Since you brought it up. Certainly. Um, we are very fortunate to have been able to receive three uh, grants to support the, the training in the Green Center. So we do everything there from weatherization training to alternative energy. Um, and a lot of it's training p uh, folks who have low skills or are dislocated. Uh, we're working with area employers to design the curriculum uh, and hopefully move them to jobs. Uh, so uh, there's a lot going on in the Green Center. Uh, we're actually in the process of bringing on a new director of the Green Center, uh, so people can be. We'll be hearing more about that uh, soon. I actually find I want to throw in there. You know, I spent some time at Bristol Community College uh, for all the different uh, meetings that I'm uh, part of, and for many of the projects that we work on uh, throughout the region here, and the technology. I, I think this is important for uh, people who are watching the show. The technology that is available at Bristol Community College is not what I would expect on a campus, on any campus. I don't care if it's a university or it's a college or uh, it's, or it be it private or public. I mean, it's just really impressive. You've got the smart boards. You've got new computer terminals all throughout. It's just really impressive. Well, it's state it of the art. Well, uh, certainly, and I think most uh, higher education institutions realize that they need to be integrating the new technology, um, whether it's, uh, you know, what we do is offer the hybrid classes as well out of the uh, center. We have the CNA training, and we're able to actually do that in a few different mo models. They have to come on, on site to do the clinical part where we have a, a certified um, CNA lab room where, where they've got the beds and, our, and they have to go through that training. But other parts of that curriculum can be delivered online and we utilize the you know, same thing over in New Bedford with the eHealth building. Uh, that is uh, you know, connected to our Workforce Development um, Institute so that you know, we really can tailor things and make it work for the individual. Much more of it, you have to take advantage of technology uh, to meet people's needs these days. So we're trying to do that along with all of our other institu institutional partners in the, in the area. And while we're talking about the, the uh, training center itself on the Wall Street, uh, Rob, since, you know, come on, I've got you here. We've got to talk about this to some degree. Uh, how, is it, how does it work for you to be able to take the training program to the individual business? You know, let's say that it's a business that has a specific need. How are you able to do that? I mean, how do you set up in the business itself to do the training? Well, uh, essentially, uh, we'll take advantage of whenever you can. We're trying to integrate the learning right on the shop floor. So we will try to integrate whatever training we're doing uh, to uh, hands-on exercises on the shop floor. We do a lot of training around lean and process improvement then you're teaching the tools in a classroom, but then they're out on the workshop floor. Uh, and this could be anything. It, it doesn't have to be a manufacturing setting, although that's where a lot of this is done, uh, to then work on projects and, and basically implement those tools. So we utilize the, the training space they have uh, on the class. That's the easiest way to do it. It's hard to bring the workers up from their site to uh, our facility when we can do it right there. So, so that's really one of the key things. We'll design it. Many companies will consult with us privately with a private contract to deliver training that they need right away, 
or we can explore the grant process if they have some lead time, because the grant does take some lead time mm -hmm. uh, to develop that. Now, you mentioned lean training. You have some seminars coming up that maybe you want to let uh, viewers know about. Sure. Well, we, uh, we are doing uh, something with the Fall River Industrial Park where we're going to do a, a lean overview. Um, and that'll be open to anyone. We're going to house it in the, in the uh, Fall River Industrial Park so that managers and supervisors can get a little better understanding about what it, the possibility, what the off, uh, opportunities are with, with uh, lean training. Um, uh, even if you don't have a high-tech firm, there's, very, there's important uh, concepts that you can get uh, uh, your employee involvement to really improve the process. So that we have going on. We do have some sessions planned for both New Bedford and Fall River to, teach, uh, to, to talk to people about the whole grant process. So we have something, I'm not sure when we're, uh, we're airing here, but on October 2nd, there'll be a session in New Bedford at our 800, 880 um, Purchase Street campus at the eHealth building in the morning which people can get some more information from our website or calling me, and then uh, hosting with you uh, something at our, uh, at our green, in our green center at the, at the Ball Street campus on uh, the um, Wednesday, October 30th. We'll be doing a morning session starting at 9 a.m., bringing the, the grant expert uh, who runs the program uh, from Boston, Mike Corcoran, down to talk about the ins and outs of the Workforce Training Fund. So I know you've had him on your a radio show and uh, we uh, are happy to be able to bring him back down to the region. That's, uh, having you in the region is really good too, Rob. And speaking of, how do businesses, what's the best way for businesses to begin the process for applying for a Workforce Training Fund Program grant? Well, uh, they don't have to wait for an information session. They can certainly just uh, contact me. That is my job. I'll come out to meet with them, if not the next day, then the day after that. Uh, because we want to be very responsive. So they can call my number. I have a direct line, which is 774-357-2165. And I have a work cell as well, which is 774-320-0123. Giving out your cell phone That's a new television. number. That's a new wow. number. So, well, Jack Sprague told me to do that, so I can. <laughs> take direction from him. So we want to be very responsive, and it start, starts at, at the top, so. Well, speaking about starting at the top, I, I have to take a moment here and reiterate how incredible it is what is being done at Bristol Community College. I just, for myself, my own observations, I have not seen anything like this. I mean, I've seen some other models that are close to what is being done. Uh, I think about uh, there's a model that's being incorporated in Texas there's a model being incorporated in Southern California, and I know of a model in South Carolina. I don't know of anybody in New England or in Southern New England that is doing anything like what you're doing. It's just really remarkable. Well, the uh, emphasis on the Institute, uh, the Workforce Education Institute, certainly is the vision of, uh, of President Spraga and uh, Vice President uh, Joan Menard. We have our new Associate uh, Vice President, Terry Romanovich. Uh, who's, uh, and we're going to have Joan and Terry on the program next month. Great. Well, yeah. they, they'll be able to share more about the vision of, of the Institute. And, uh, and I'll be honest, I think that Massachusetts is well served by their community college system. I have counterparts in the other uh, community colleges that are also actively reaching out to the employers and, and working to, to utilize the, the Well, state absolutely. Funds. But I saw when the governor came down and saw what you folks were doing here in at the Duval Street location I mean, he was amazed he was absolutely amazed uh, well, that was I mean, it wasn't just me who recognized that and he he voiced it he was very impressed uh, with what you guys are doing so getting back to our topic at hand uh, on the workforce training fund program and the implementation of it so basically a business wants to do this and they should definitely contact you guys. What should they have prepared for themselves when they do contact you? Well, we have a whole checklist. So you don't have to have anything prepared except your desire and commitment 
to invest in training. So um, the dollars are, you've already contributed to the Workforce Training Fund, so that will largely cover the cost of implementing a training. You have to be prepared to work with us and get your leadership team on board as well as down to your mid-level managers and supervisors to, uh, to champion any training you want to do. But we have a checklist of all the requirements that you have. You will have to produce a certificate of good standing because this is money that comes out of the unemployment insurance that certifies that you're current on your taxes. And that's so, easy, that's very easy for a business to get. It's right? an online process. Exactly, you go to the Secretary of State's office, you apply for it, you give them your 15 bucks or whatever it is, and which you can even do on credit card, I believe. Sure, and actually uh, the, the actual and you get it in email, you get it in PDF right. uh, within an hour. Right, and the actual, yeah. so, so the reason that uh, they should call me and not you is because the certificate they actually need is from the Department of Revenue. So it is, and there's no cost for that. They they need that certificate from Secretary of State in order to do business. But this is one that you have to have updated, and it does come from the Department of Revenue. We'll walk you through all that. Um, you have to be prepared, like with any grant program, to show your financial information, and we can work with you that. It, that is kept confidential, right. but the state needs to know uh, that you are a good a candidate for public funding, uh, to put it that way. But these are been conditions that have been uh, part of the fund since it was started in 1999. And um, I don't even know how many millions that have been given out in a $300 million range. So it's no, it's it's great. So why uh, last elevator pitch for you? Why should they be doing this? Why should businesses be calling you guys? Well. The, the biggest investment you have is your employees, and that is your competitive advantage. So that uh, productivity continues to increase. We're doing more with less. So call us. It's your money. We can help you uh, obtain uh, the grants you need to train your workers. Well, Rob, it has been a great edition of the Workforce Connection, and it has been a pleasure talking with you about the Workforce Training Fund program. Uh, it goes by quickly. And I want to thank you so much for coming on the program and explaining how uh, the Workforce Training Fund program works and how people need to be communicating with Bristol Community College to get the ball rolling. Thank you very much. Great. I'd be happy to come back another time. Thanks for the Oh, we definitely have to have the you opportunity. on. Maybe we can talk about stories, uh, companies Success that stories. have done it. Absolutely. So thank you for watching the Workforce Connection, and we will see you in our next edition.